afternoon, good evening. I am your host, Data T, and this is my channel, The Good Guys. Guys, today's story comes out of Little Rock. This looks like uh, Little Rock, Arkansas, if I am not mistaken. Okay. And the title reads Pine Bluff Shooting Leaves One Dead and Two Paramedics Injured. Before we get into the story, guys, if you wouldn't mind leaving a like, leaving a comment, subscribe. We're on the road still to a thousand subscribers. We just hit 200. And I thank you guys for that. And um, we want to spread this news. We want to spread the good news that there are people out there using their firearms to protect themselves. Okay. And uh, you guys can always hit me on Twitter or mines on Truth Social and on various other platforms. So let us dive in to today's story. Pine Bluff police are investigating after two paramedics were shot and another man killed early this morning. Channel 7's Shelby Rose joins us outside Emergency Ambulance Services headquarters with what police say happened. Shelby. Aaron, first and foremost, I do have some good news to report. Both paramedics are out of surgery and in stable condition, but Emergency Ambulance Service tells us that nothing like this has ever happened before. Around 430 in the morning, a call came over dispatch in Pine Bluff. Two paramedics have been shot. Another man killed. Utter shock, something you can never prepare for or plan on and just ultimately very worried for my crew. They were originally called to a woman complaining of knee pain. It was later found out that her boyfriend, 22 year old Kevin Curl Jr. pushed her to the ground. Once paramedics arrived to this house on West 23rd, Curl supposedly became aggressive and started shooting. All we heard was some gunshots, so we walked out on, we walked out to the house and the um, paramedic, he was slumped on the floor, but he was good and stuff. He was like, I'm still alive and stuff. Go check on the other dude. The paramedics were shot three times each in the chest abdomen and pelvic areas. One of them, John Spriggs Sr. returned fire and shot Curl once in the chest. He was pronounced dead on scene inside the home. All right, guys, so, so many things here. And I do want to come at it from a different angle, but I think I'll do that at the end. But let's take a look. One, the lady could not defend herself, so she called the paramedics. Now, she didn't call the police after being assaulted, okay? Uh, they get to the scene. This woman cannot defend herself, right? And the paramedics. Now, I got to tell you, unless this is a new trend, I have not seen armed paramedics. People who are EMTs, anything like that. I've never seen it. Maybe in a different state. Maybe this is the case here. But I haven't seen it at all in my home state and other, in various other states. But it may be a new trend. Maybe this is a result of after 2020, right? The summer of love. But I will say it's a good thing that they were armed. It's high time, folks, that we have to understand, and I think people understand this, even while you are working, you may have to be able to, to defend yourself. Think about it. You could be a mailman delivering mail, and some dog comes out of nowhere, you have to shoot him. Or some joker who doesn't like you coming to his particular doorstep, you may have to defend yourself. And I know people are going to say, oh, why do we have to take a gun anywhere? Why are you advocating for this? Because it's your life. It's the only one you have. So obviously, I'm going to advocate to protect your life. Think about it. Imagine, and I keep saying this, imagine if these paramedics didn't bring their firearm with them. And it's just the one guy. Imagine if he didn't have it. Let's 
continue with the story. This is something we've never had to deal with. Uh, it's not something we've ever really thought in the realm of possibility. The girlfriend was reported to be further unharmed, and both Spriggs and his partner, Joshua Godfrey, were rushed to Jefferson Regional. They're a great team. He, they're both family men, both have kids of their own, and they're just out here trying to provide the best care they can for the citizens of Pine Bluff in Jefferson County. And unfortunately, this is just a tragic, tragic incident. Bishop did not go into detail about their current policies and procedures, but he did say that they are looking to make some changes after this whole incident. Aaron. OK, Shelby, thanks. According to Pine Bluff Police, this is still an active investigation. We'll continue to update the story as we get more information. OK, guys, so imagine you're in this situation. OK, you are the one helping someone else who comes to help you. And it got me thinking, and I think that, you know, on this channel, yes, we encourage people to get a gun. I absolutely am 100% upfront about that. Okay. Exercise your Second Amendment. But are you exercising other alternatives at the very least? If you're not going to carry a gun, okay, why not carry some life saving tools? Okay. Um, I like carrying tourniquets. I like carrying these particular uh, things that can, can potentially uh, uh, life saving. Um, where I used to work, I liked being the particular guy where everybody would come to get band aids and stuff and being that type of a medic. Um, I liked being that person. And I think. In your everyday life, why not have those things? Okay. And I want to show you guys this before we, we finish here. Take a look at this. Okay. Um, some of these uh, pocket trauma kits, in most cases, the more severe ones are called IFACs, the individual first aid kits. Okay. And some of these guys you can put in your pocket. The one that I have, I have something very similar to this. And I use it, okay. I put this in my pocket, okay. And I and it, it is somewhat very. It used to be sometimes I didn't want to carry it because it, I actually stuffed extra stuff in here, and it became a little too packed. So I had to downgrade it again. But um, I I think these things are are pretty, pretty nice. They just put in your pocket, you, in addition to your wallet. OK, uh, there's Band-Aids there. There's some uh, propylene. This is some alcohol pads, uh, prep pads. Even they have quick clot there and one SWAT T tourniquet, which is better than nothing. OK, and then in some cases, if you want to go up and up your game, you can get one of these stop the bleed kits, put it in your bag. I think this is this is a, an idea. This is a good idea. Get some of these things. Okay, maybe not this super overblown one here. That's pretty huge. Okay, but get one something like this, forty-five dollars, and just put it in your your bag there. Okay, tourniquet, chest seal, scissors, even. I don't think it's a bad idea. And and, and if and and even me, what I do, and this is not an advertisement for a warrior poet. Okay, but I purchased this particular ankle one. Okay, and what I do is. Any time, okay, this is the components. Any time that I wear pants, I wear this. Always, okay? Okay, if you look at the picture here, barely anybody sees it, okay? Nobody sees it, okay? People, some people, okay, are very observant, okay? But they're, the vast majority of the public is not, all right? And, and nobody's going to see it. OK, and what I do is when I wear shorts, sometimes what I do is I will take this off and put it in my fanny pack and I'd wear and I that that'll cover me for the day. OK. Um, if I wear shorts, I wear a fanny pack. If I have pants, 
I put this on. I think everybody should think about having some first aid measures on them because who comes to save you when you're saving somebody else? You cannot rely on these people, guys. You must be your own first responder even if you are a responder. How crazy is that? That these guys who came to help had to help themselves. It is a novel concept. Anyway, guys, you guys know what I say at the end of these videos, and I mean it, okay? Good people have guns. Good people always and should always have guns. And if good people do nothing, there will be no good guys. Oh, my God.